Hey, what's up guys, it's Dread. So, while we wait for episode 3 of the council, I just wanted to make a fun little video. So I decided to pick out three interesting things or easter eggs that you might have missed while you were playing. If you've been playing, which you should be. Uh, the game is just full of references to popular art, uh, mythology, history, and uh, just an array of other subjects. It includes interesting characters and then characters based on real life people. So I just picked out three of my favorite to talk about. Alright, so the first little easter egg, and my favorite, I picked up when I was doing my research for the suspect videos that I've been doing. So in the prologue, you steal a back a book called the Al-Azif, and if you google Al-Azif, it takes you to the Wikipedia page for the Necrom Necronomicon. If you, don't know, if you don't know what that is, it's the fictional textbook of magic that appears in the, uh, in the, in the stories by horror writer H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, you've probably seen a reference in Evil Dead movies. Uh, Wikipedia goes on to tell us that in 1927, Lovecraft wrote a brief pseudo-history of the Necronomicon that was published in 1938 after his death as a history of the Necronomicon. According to this count, the book was originally called the El the Al Azif, an Arabic word that Lovecraft defined as that nocturnal sound made by insects supposed to be the howlings of demons. So the El Azif is the original name for the Necronomicon. Also if you don't know the Necronomicon it contains a fictional account of the old ones uh, and their history and the means for summoning them. The old ones are like these big giant monsters that are just like combinations of different animals and sea creatures. And there's even a game coming out later based on the Lovecraft story, The Call of Cthulhu, that incorporates the Necronomicon too. So if you successfully completed the confrontation with Von Walner in episode 2, you learn he's desperate to get his hands on the book and he wanted to buy it from our mother before, he, before she went missing. And then we learn he's also he's working for home who really wants the book. That's Mortimer's close friend with the silly face paint. And then Von Walner goes on to warn us that Holm is not a man who likes to be duped. He's not a, someone you mess with. So why does Holm want this book? What kind of monsters is he planning on summoning? Uh, I guess we're going to have to wait and see. Alright, so the next one comes from episode 2. If you decided to eavesdrop on Piaggi and Von Walner, Piaggi reveals he has given Mortimer 18 spears as far back as 20 years ago. Von Wolner believes by doing this he has doomed them all. So, we know from episode 1 that Mortimer likes to collect historic relics. We can interact with a bunch of them in his trophy room. Uh, things like Pandora's box, Caesar's laurel wreath, and uh, Joan of Arc's sword. And given the connection to Piaggi and the church, we can only conclude the spear Mortimer is looking for is the spear of destiny. So if we check Wikipedia again, we learn... The Holy Lance, also known as the Holy Spear, or the Spear of Destiny, according to the Gospel of John, is the lance that pierced the side of Jesus as he hung on the cross. So if Holm is trying to find the El Azif, his friendly rival Mortimer is trying to find the Holy Lance. So we, we also found the Gospel of Judas in Mortimer's trophy room that I was talking about earlier. And then during that time, Louis remarks the contents of, the, of Judas's gospel could undermine the foundations of Christianity. So there's another connection. Uh, another connection to the crucifixion can be found in Mortimer's secret study where we find three rusty nails about 20 centimeters long. Alright, so the last interesting thing I wanted to talk about was the short note we can find in Mortimer's secret study apparently from his brother. It basically says their father is against his plans for Europe and that he should just give up. It also says he plans on coming to his conference on the island, and then he signs it G, not given his full name. So that leaves us to wonder who his brother is and what the G stands for. So could the G stand for Gregory? Could it be Sir Gregory Home, the white-faced fellow I already talked about, who's already on the island? So we're going to have to wait till the next episode when they have the conference to find out that one. Um, but another little Easter egg in Mortimer's study 
is a skeleton that you can find in the back. If you read the plaque, we learn more and more names of Gustav. So, could this be a reference to his brother? Does the G stand for Gustav? And also, if you notice the skeleton, it's missing a hand, just like Louis's mother, Sarah. But the only difference, she's missing her left hand while the skeleton, skeleton is missing the right. So, it's a little odd, so maybe we'll see a connection in later episodes there too. Okay, that's it for now. I just wanted to connect some pieces and point out some big plot points for anyone who missed it. Uh, if you learned anything or if I missed anything, let me know in the comments. But thanks for watching.